Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today is Saturday, March 21st, 2020, and uh, this is a weekend news update. So, um, they finally released an open beta this week, the other day, and uh, this is the long list of fixes and changes. Looks like they've made some adjustments to Hydra 70s, uh, multiplayer status can't start from the third cat fixed, aim 120 bug fix, multiplayer fixed occasional crash at artillery fire, some memory leaks in terrain sources were fixed, crash when AI helicopters collect troops fixed, wake turbulence damages aircraft on the ground fixed, um, helicopter AI wingman taxi bug with script fixed, Multiplayer missiles flying underground and into space. That one sounds like a bummer. Fixed. Aircraft repair under hard cover will not create problem. They need to spell check some of this stuff. Uh, fixed. Uh, they've made some changes to the C-101 AvioJet by AvioDev. The Mirage now looks to have included all of the fixes that I was telling you guys about before uh, because they had found out there are certain features that aren't in the 2000C uh, that are in a later model or that don't exist in the 2000C in general. So all that stuff we were talking about before has been included in the latest open beta. Uh, they also added a head to the VR Pilot's Shadow. They've done a couple tweaks to the AJS-37, the Vigan. Uh, F-14B, the other thing we reported here not long ago about the uh, added TID AVIA page, basically displaying AOA, vertical velocity, ILS, and ACLS, enabling the Rio to closely monitor landing procedures and assist the pilot with pattern work. They've added a fix for radar ground stabilization at high roll angles, fix for radar range scale reverting to 200 nautical miles during P-Search HCU acquisition and multi-crew, fix for RWS contacts on the TID timing out too soon on a one bar scan, um, added COM1 frequency and COM2 frequency parameters exported to the Lua scripts, not sure what all that is, Fix for afterburner lighting at too high of a throttle position. Improvements to the pilot stick travel animation. Added afterburner markers on the controls indicator. Removed debug carrier glide scope on control indicator. Um, added FFB trim checkbox option for a more realistic trim operation feel while using a force feedback joystick. Works if any non VJOY force feedback device is detected. More realistic force feedback travel with trim actuator movement. Adjusted the compressor stall spool dynamics and fine tuning of the pitch axis handling qualities. For the DCS JF17 by DECA Ironworks simulations, they've added a variety of fixes. It looks like uh, Magnitude 3 had did some stuff on the MiG-21 as well. Now there's one we haven't seen any uh, movement on in quite some time. Uh, longitudinal stability model improved, suspension model approved, uh, AI aircraft SFM model improved to more closely comply with the human model, most notably in terms of previous AOA differences for comparative performances positions of fire and smoke effects corrected to comply with visual damage. Some audio visual effects fixes such are corrected F2 RPM indication for afterburner regimes, IR signature on afterburner, etc. The first stage of code cleanup, part of the code optimized for faster execution and less memory use, next stage in progress corrected the inverted animation of the PRMG localizer needle on the NPP instrument. The F-18 Hornet, they've added FLIR pointing modes, HUD pointing modes, snowplow pointing mode, velocity vector slaved mode, uh, radar sometimes doesn't see targets in multiplayer fixed, fixed the air-to-air -air gun sight foresight cue adjusted air-to-air -air gun sight funnel, 
uh, port side navigation light stays on fixed added canopy and MFD reflection options uh, the F-16 looks like it got some love too. They fixed the dogfight mode. Um, search for targets. Search targets on FCR screen have velocity vectors instead of hotlines fixed. Missing lock lines fixed. No loft for the AIM-120 fixed. Uh, FCR AAD clutter toggles by short depressing COM SW inboard for less than 0.5 seconds. Improved EEGS mode. All right. That's the new gun stuff that they've added. Uh, horizon line seems too high on the Persian Gulf map. Fixed. F-16 has no option to send flight to tanker and radio menu. Fixed. Added a canopy color option. Oh, that's interesting. Added canopy and MFD reflections options. UFC training mission inaccuracies have been fixed. The cockpit warning lights material tuned. Uh, added some liveries, added board number, and radar STT automatic range scale adjustment doesn't work if STT was entered from TWS. Um, this next one goes along with what we'll talk about here in a second. Uh, major updates to the Focke-Wulf 190A-8 by Eagle Dynamics. Uh, lots of stuff here. I just say read the list. Uh, BF-109, major sound update. Uh, Focke-Wulf 190D9, the Dora. Rockets were remade as separate models so they could be ripped off while hitting the ground. Interesting. Uh, the Albatross. In the case when the aircraft is controlled by a player in the back seat and is thrown out of the server for some reason, control passes to the first player. Flaming Cliffs 3, uh, Su-27, multiplayer data link ghost contacts fixed. F-16C, instant action Persian Gulf F-16C free flight over West Dubai. The increased start speed 2.8 Mach. Uh, to prevent stall conditions. Uh, Black Shark 2, increased time to idle, working on the first engine for correct start, second engine in cold conditions. Fixed a bug that broke the display of the message aircraft ready. Uh, correct mirror images inside of the cockpit. Uh, the standby compass fails to show direction from 180 to 360 degrees has been fixed. And then, as you see, there are some campaign tweaks um, they've done some stuff to various campaigns, uh, updated some units to current models, removed unused units and replaced them with static models, corrected parking positions to match the 2.56 changes. Um, that pretty much covers it for the change log. Um, I really wish they would take the lettering off of the main screen in VR though. I forget what that says, but there's two words that just are superimposed to the left and to the right over your head when you're in VR that was only introduced into 2.5.6, so I don't know why that wasn't included on the list. I really wish they would fix that one because that is the most fucking annoying one that I've seen so far. Uh, at least it gets on my nerves. So they posted their own news bit. Uh, basically uh, goes into squadron air-to-air -air leagues, SATL, uh, watch or compete. Uh, Sign-up closes April 30th. Uh, there's a lot of information here, which I will include a link to if you're into the SATL stuff. Um, Stay-at-home sale is still going. There's a video for that. Uh, they're announcing, and this is what I mentioned uh, in the change log there, is the, there's a lot of stuff they did to the Focke Wolf 190A-8. And we are proud to announce the backbone of the Luftwaffe is moving out of early access. Over the past year, we've been working closely with the community to iron out bugs and create a list of sought-after features. So the Focke-Wulf 190A-8 is out of early access. So this is a complete product at this point. And the good news is that it's on sale for half off right now. They also go on to talk about the AIM-120 development. This is something they've been talking about on and off for a while now, and I think it came about when they released the JF-17, when the JF-17 missile, and I can't remember the name of it, one of you guys I'm sure know exactly what I'm talking about, because I don't have the JF-17. Um, that missile was performing better than the AIM-20, and everybody lost their minds. Uh, I think that sparked a debate and kind of got them thinking, and now they've been working on uh, tweaking the AIM-120. So that's pretty much what they're talking about here. In other interesting news, RASBAM 
has posted some imagery of their MiG-23. Basically it's just a 3D model and some bits and pieces from it, but I look forward to this plane. This plane sounds like it would be really fun. I'm not so into the MiG-21, but I think the later model MiG-23 could be a lot of fun. And it is a 80s or Cold War era aircraft, which uh, sounds like could be a lot of fun to me, at least. Okay, Wags had made a post yesterday, and uh, basically it says, Unique Carriers. For DCS Super Carrier, we will be providing all Nimitz-class aircraft carriers of the Theodore Roosevelt subclass. These include CVN-71, USS Theodore Roosevelt. CVN-72, USS Abraham Lincoln. CVN-73, the USS George Washington. These will be the first three carriers released at early access. After the early access release, we will provide CVN-74, USS John C. Stennis. CVN-75, the USS Harry S. Truman. In addition to unique naming and numbering of the carriers, they will also have unique geometry. This is evident in the islands, towers and antennas. Uh, please see the attached and note that they are a work in progress. Each ship, each ship will have unique carrier communication call signs. And they posted a couple images of it. Here is the Theodore Roosevelt. the Abraham Lincoln and the George Washington. Pretty cool stuff. I'm looking forward to seeing how this pans out and how it enhances the overall experience. And um, Steam a couple weeks ago did show that the release date is pretty near for this. I don't know if that's still holding up at this point, especially with everything that's going on in the world. Nothing is certain right now. But one thing is, the supercarrier looks to be a lot of fun, especially for naval operations. Lastly, the guys at IL-2 Great Battles uh, put out a 12-minute almost video. Uh, it's a video showing beta footage of their improved damage model for IL-2 Stormovic Great Battles series. Wings are no longer blown off so easily and damage is calculated and expressed more realistically. This is still a work in progress and engine damage is turned off in this video. So give this a watch. It's a pretty cool video. Hello fellow virtual pilots. It's Jason here coming to you live from my underground. Which is very Island. loud. Stocked with food, ammunition, and lots and lots of iced tea. And I'm streaming Netflix, Hulu, Prime Video, Disney Plus, and Pornhub. <laughs> I so believe that is the producer. Soon, very soon. Possibly next week and definitely by the end of this month. We really didn't plan to do this work now. But like many things the team works on, uh, once they dig into something, they discover issues that need to be fixed. So that looks pretty cool. I'm not going to bore you with all the details of the video and skipping all over the place. But, you know, check it out for yourself. There's going to be a link in the uh, bottom of the video here and uh, I will provide a link to everything that I talked about today and um, I think that's it guys uh, I've been playing around with the Christian Eagle myself uh, I'm getting ready to buy Doom Eternal I think that looks pretty exciting and um, that's about it uh, I'm still working my day job at the moment uh, uncertain of where things are going here at the at this point in time that's why the videos have slowed down a little bit um, but I will keep things going as much as I possibly can while the real world demands what it demands and uh, hopefully everybody is staying safe washing their hands uh, practicing social distancing uh, I think a lot of this just requires common sense at this point but um, be safe, guys. Be safe. And, and, and it is a great time if you are stuck at home to jump in and have some fun at flight sims. Like DCS is on sale right now. Uh, the IL-2 stuff is, is fun and, and definitely worthwhile. Uh, it's a good time to like flight simulations. And we do need a little bit of something to get our minds off of the chaos and 
everything that just happens to be going on around us, you know. I saw a meme the other day, and it said, you know, 2020, uh, just let me out right here, you know. And I can kind of feel that, you know. It's a little stressful right now, but like I said, you know, spend time with your family and wash your hands and, and just make sure that everybody is safe. And uh, as always, thank you for watching. Uh, please subscribe to the channel. Feel free to hit that like button. And uh, again, stay safe. Until next time.